पे है कपी में पर सवार कलमाए काहिद पढ़ते जा रहे हैं बार बार आंख में आंसू है चेहरे पर खुशी का दूर है इन कसीना चलवाए ईमान से मागूर है अलविदा ऐसू साबा जाने वालों अलविदा दोनों आलम की मुरादे पाने वालों अलविदा हाजिनों को जब अजीजों ने खुदा हाफिज कहा हर तरफ से पी अमान लाह की आई सदा Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God Almighty, the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful. I swear to Allah, 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 that there is but one and only one God Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala the Lord of the worlds dearest and most beloved divine brothers and sisters in the concourse of humanity and the fraternity of religions Assalamu Alaikum may the peace May the mercies and the blessings of God Almighty be with you, you and you. And through this, the medium of electricity through YouTube and Facebook around the world. And I'm your host, Haji Roshan Khan, Chairman of the Electric Mosques, presentation of the teachings of Islam, striving to bring Islam peace and wisdom into your hearts, into the hearts of humanity and the world at large. The song we played just now, and which you will hear a little piece later on again, by Muhammad Rafi is the Hajj welcoming the hungry pilgrim, seeking salvation in the holy land of Makkah in Saudi Arabia. Dearest and most beloved, divine brothers and sisters, we must all make dua for all the Guyanese brothers and sisters who have left this country under the guidance and aid of our beloved Sheikh Muin al Haq of the Central Islamic Organization of Guyana. And I pray that Allah bless them and him and accept all of their hajj and all the hajj of all the pilgrims who make the millions, the three millions plus that make their way to Makkah this year. May Allah be pleased with them. Brothers and sisters, but why the hajj? Where did it come from? What is its purpose? Who constructed the Kaaba? In whose direction all Muslims around the world face? Around the world face. And constantly, beloved divine and brothers and sisters of Islam, all day long, because of time lapse and time changes, we are always facing that direction throughout the world, facing the holy Kaaba Sharif. This is a reality that Muslims and humanity must accept. And that there, as I said before in previous testaments here on the electric mosques, presentation of the teachings of Islam, the zum zum water that comes forth from the earth that is a healing for mankind and humanity. I already taught you in a previous presentation that the Hajj is named after an African woman 
who in English is called Hagar, but in the Arabic Eastern languages as well, her name was Hajar, and she was a princess of Egypt, Africa, and not a slave as some people like to make it appear. She was like a lady in waiting of Sarah, the wife of Abraham, and she was a princess, and extremely beautiful. So that is where the Hajj name came from, but I cannot go through it all. I did it before about how Abraham had to abandon her, his beloved wife, agreed to by Sarah, and his firstborn son of power, name chosen by God Almighty, Ishmael, his firstborn. But many, many don't want to accept him and interfere with scriptures because he was the firstborn and because his mother was African, a black woman. I wish to give you a few quotes from the Holy Quran directly about Abraham and the Kaaba before I move on into other aspects of the today's presentation, which is I hope also to do the last sermon of Prophet Muhammad, his testament to mankind. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a slight cold and I might have a little bit of a cough. Diamond is not our sponsors, but they are our friends. Diamond Mineral Water of Demerara Distillers Limited, the closest thing to the holy waters of the Zanzam in Makkah. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Quran speaks most about Abraham or the name given to him by God Almighty, that's his parents' name that they had given to him. His name was Ibrahim, alayhi salam, on whom be peace and blessings of God Almighty. And God Almighty is reminding mankind in this the holy and the glorious Quran. Allah's gift to humanity. These are the words that God Almighty describes him by. And remember that Abraham Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Al Baqarah 2 124 and remember that Abraham was tried by his Lord with certain commands which he fulfilled and God Almighty said I will make thee an Imam a leader to the nations he pleaded also imams from my offspring Abraham asked God Almighty and God Almighty answered but my promise is not within the reach of evil doers brothers and sisters in this conversation between Ibrahim or Abraham and God Almighty When God tells him, I'll make ye an imam of nations, a leader of peoples, a father to nations, then he asks, to God he's talking, and what from my offspring, he's worried about his children. And God told him, but my promise is not within the reach of evildoers. So God is telling him, yes. But if your offsprings are evil, my blessings and my powers will not be with them. And 
to so it means they could end up getting into corrupted transactions and behavior and even great failures. And Quran 125 says, Remember, we made the house, the Kaaba, a place of assembly for men and the place of safety. And take ye the station of Abraham as a place of prayer. And we co covenanted with Abraham and Ishmael that they should sacrifice, that they should sanctify my house for those who encompass it around or use it as a retreat or bow or prostrate themselves therein in prayer. My brothers and sisters, the Kaaba is the house of God Almighty. Its foundation goes back by Arab traditions to the reconstruction to Abraham on whom be peace and blessings of God Almighty, but it is also believed it was built originally by the first man, Adam, when he found his wife, Hawa, Eve, after they were chased out of the, the garden. And after 40 years of wandering, he found his wife in Arafah, the holy land, where the Meccas go on the night of, where the the travelers, the pilgrims go by the millions on the night of Dhul Hijjah, the day of the assembly of pilgrims. And I'll give you the, hopefully, inshallah, at least major parts of the last testament that Muhammad, and Obi peace, gave to mankind and the world. And it was built or rebuilt by Ibrahim on whom be peace and his son Ishmael when he went to find them again after he, he was forced by God to abandon them in order to build this great nation of believers called the Muslims which would be done by his descendants. And Abraham cried out to his Lord Quran 126 and remember Abraham said, My Lord, make this city of peace and feed its people with fruits, such of them as believe in Allah on the last day. He said, Yea, and such as reject faith, for a while I will grant them pleasure, but soon will drive them to the torment of fire, an evil destination indeed, once again. God Almighty is the knower of hearts. He is the knower of events, of destinations. And here Abraham once again is calling out, he begging God to make the city of one of peace, and feed his people with best of fruits. Such of, of, of them, of course, who believe in Allah, God Almighty, on the last day. And Allah tells him, for a while I will grant them their pleasure, who reject faith, and will drive them to the torment of fire, because he knows they will be unrighteous ones amongst the Muslims, as they are amongst the Jews, as they are amongst the Christians, righteous and unrighteous ones. God knows they will be righteous ones. And he will deal with them consequently, appropriately. An evil destination. Subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it as. And remember Abraham and Ishmael Raise the foundations of the house with this prayer. Our Lord, accept this service from us. 
for thou art the all hearing, the all knowing. And these are the prayers. The prayer continues. Our Lord make us Muslims. Who is a Muslim? One who bows to the will of God. Make us Muslims bowing to thy will. And of our progeny are people Muslim bowing to thy will. And show us our places for the celebration of due rights. And turn us, turn unto us in mercy, for thou art the oft relenting, most merciful. The praying for the progeny, the descendants, they must continue to be Muslims. And all of them must bow to the will of God to live the righteous life, to be protected, so they would not go to that evil destination. And who is God? Oft relenting, most merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we go on. 129. Our Lord sent amongst them a messenger of their own. This is the point I'm getting at before I move to his last sermon. Pay attention. Subhanallah. Praise be to God Almighty. Our Lord sent amongst them a messenger of their own. Who shall rehearse thy signs to them and instruct them in scripture and wisdom and purify them? For thou art the exalted in might, the wise. See how God is described, how he describes himself? Afrilenting, most merciful, the all knowing, the all seeing, the exalted. In might, the wise. And I go on, section 16. I'm coming to that last sermon shortly. And who turns away from the religion of Abraham? But such as pay, but such as debase their souls with folly. Him we choose and render pure in the world. And he will be the hereafter in the ranks of the righteous. And who turns away from the religion of Abraham? But such as the debase, they debase their souls with folly. And what do we do? Him we choose and render pure in the world. And he will be the, in the hereafter in the ranks of the righteous. Abraham, us who do the righteous things, will be in the proper ranks. Behold in the conversation with God Almighty Abraham and God Almighty speaking to one another. Behold, the Lord said to him, Submit thy will to me, he said. Abraham answers, I bow my will to the Lord and cherisher of the universe. Oh my God, I'm touched. La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah I bow my will to the Lord and cherisher of the universe, says Ibrahim or Abraham. And this was the legacy that Abraham left to his sons. And so did Jacob. O oh my sons, Allah hath chosen the faith for you that die not except in the state of submission to Allah. And I must mention to you, Christians, a lot of them make some mistakes. The language of Jesus Christ was Aramic, a sister language of Arabic. And his word for Allah, when you hear our Father who art in heaven, he would say, Allah or Allah. The language of Jesus Christ was Aramic. Please remember that. And he worshipped God as Allah. All his worship to God was Allah and he never heard of anything called Jehovah. 
that's an English name given by the Englishman. And I'm not being critical, I'm just explaining something that's a reality. For those who don't know, my Christian brothers and sisters, check. You can even Google what is the original language of Jesus Christ. Because people don't like to read books anymore. They want to do all kinds of things, write exams on through Google, Google, Google all the time. So do the shortcut. Google what is the original language of Jesus Christ. They'll tell you Aramic. And what is the word for God or God Almighty in Aramic. And they'll tell you Allah or Allah. 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 So brothers and sisters, I could go on and go on because the Quran speaks so much about Abraham that I might not, I just might not end, but I'll give you one more quote. Chapter 3, Al-Imran. Chapter 3, Al-Imran, verse 67. Abraham, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Abraham was not a Jew nor a Christian, but he was true in faith and bowed his will to Allah's, which is Islam, and he joined not any other gods with Allah, God Almighty. Verse 68 tells us who are the closest people to Abraham? Without doubt among men, the nearest of kin to Abraham are those who follow him. He was neither a Jew nor a Christian. Are the 60, in order to clear up any problems, and he walked at the age of 60, and he was very sick, because he lived, lived a very steadfast life of action, and he had achieved what he wanted, or what he was meant for him to have done, and all that he wanted as well. And he walked on the whole pilgrimage, and set the trail of the pilgrimage as the Muslims observe today, as our brothers are doing today. And it was on the night of dhul when he stood on Mount Arafah, and right there now is a monument at the exact spot where he stood. And he gave, he, he was speaking to the people, that's the day of the assembly of the pre pilgrims that it will be happening on Tuesday next. Wednesday is the day of sacrifice. Tuesday next, all day long, is the day of the assembly of the pilgrims in Arafah. And those of you who are there, you know the power that you move as you make that dua. And as you have prayed and sacrificed there all day long. And when Muhammad was speaking, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, addressing his people, he fell into a swoon, and that's how he gets his revelation. He falls into a swoon, he loses consciousness, and then the words Angel Gabriel brings him from God Almighty is imprinted into his subconscious. And then, at that time, there was a, over a hundred thousand persons listening to him in an act of great devotion to their master prophet and exemplar. And he asked them a question. Have I served my purpose and delivered my message unto you? And a poor powerful murmur of assent oh Allah yes arose from the hundreds of from the hundred thousands of pilgrims and the vibrant words Allahumma naam rolled like thunder throughout the valley by God thou hast the prophet raised his forefinger and said be my witness O Allah that I have conveyed your message to your people Toward the end of his sermon, the Prophet had also received a revelation that this, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, 
This day have I perfected for you your religion and has chosen for you Islam as your religion. My timekeepers are warning me, but we'll go an extra five minutes. Oh, people! These are his words. As you know, he will be going soon to meet his maker. Oh, my people! Oh, my people! Let me an attentive ear. For I know not whether after this year... I shall ever be amongst you again. Therefore listen carefully to what I am saying and take these words to those who could not be present here today. O oh people, just as you regard this month, this day, this city as sacred, so regard this life and property of every Muslim as a sacred trust. Return the goods entrusted to you to their rightful owners. Hurt no one, so no one may hurt you. Remember that you will indeed meet your Lord, and that he will indeed reckon your deeds. Allah has forbidden you to take usury or interest. Therefore, all interest obligations shall henceforth be waived. Your capital is yours to keep. You will neither inflict nor suffer any inequity. Allah has judged that there shall be no interest and that all the interest due to Abbas ibn Abd al-Mutabid, Mutalib, the Prophet's uncle, that it's waived. Every night arising out of every right arising out of homicide in pre Islamic days is henceforth waived. And the first such right that I waive is that arising from the mother of Rabia ibn al Hariyatiya, here showing that forgiveness is imperative in Islam. And he goes on to say, O men, the unbelievers indulge in tampering with the calendar in order to make permissible that which Allah forbade and to prohibit which Allah has made permissible. With Allah the months are twelve in number, four of them are holy, three of these are successive and one occurs singly between the month of Jumada and Shaban. Beware of Satan! For the safety of your religion. He has lost all hope that he will be able to lead you astray in big things. So beware of following him in small things. Oh my people, it is true that you have certain rights with regard to your women. But they also have rights over you. Remember that you have taken them as your wives only Allah's, under Allah's trust and with His permission. If they abide by your right, then to them belongs the right to be fed and clothed in kindness. Do treat your women well and be kind to them, for they are your partners and committed helpers. And it is your right that they do not make friends with anyone whom you do not approve as well as to remain chaste or pure. O oh, people, listen to me in earnest. Worship Allah. Say your five daily prayers. Fast during the month of Ramadan and give your zakah in, or wealth in obligatory charity. Perform hajj if you can afford. And listen carefully, brothers and sisters. All mankind is from Adam and Eve. An Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab. Nor a non-Arab has any superiority over an Arab. 
Also, a white has no superiority over a black. Nor a black has any superiority over a white. Except by piety and good action. Learn that every Muslim is a brother to every Muslim. And that the Muslims constitute one brotherhood. Nothing you shall be legit legitimate to a Muslim which belongs to a fellow Muslim unless it was given freely and willingly. Do not therefore do injustice to yourselves. Remember one day you will meet with Allah and answer for your deeds. So beware, do not go astray from the path of righteousness after I am gone. See how concerned he was about for his people. O oh people, no prophet or apostle will come after me, and no new faith will be born. Reason well, therefore, O oh people, and understand the words which I convey to you. I leave behind me two things. This Quran and my sunnah, that is my deeds, my examples and approvals. And if you follow these, you will not go astray. And those who listen to me shall pass on my words to others, and those to others again. And may the last ones understand my words better than those who listen to me directly. He is so concerned for people like us that we may understand his words more than his sahabas or his haters, his helpers, who were with him. And he said to his people, Be my witness, O Allah, that I have conveyed your message to your people. What a powerful and a beautiful message. Thank you for watching.